This is Andy Burkowski for VGS, continuing our walkthrough of Disco Elysium, the sad cop whose name I have not found out yet. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are in the process of trying to get the hanged man out of the tree. We've gotten really, really good with Kuno, who likes to swear and is probably being abused. We've talked to a few people inside, but we haven't really dove in much deeper into the world around. Still tons of stuff that I need to do. I'm going for a very communist, emotionally insane type of run. The guy is, uh, yeah, if you look at his scores here. Yeah, a lot of the Inland Empire stuff, the demons are talking to me. I throw up anytime someone looks at me. I can't really see stuff around me. But I'm also a little bit smart, so this has been a lot of fun just because of how deluded and insane I am. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that continues. So let's talk to this guy. Hello again, my man. What's on your mind? No, we already talked to him. I haven't actually spoken to, even gone to these areas here. So let's explore a little bit with our our best friend here. Ooh, they're gone. That's interesting. That is very interesting. I was wondering if if the characters would leave, and they do. The worn and beaten wood planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. <clears throat> Lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass time when Lieutenant Kitsugara is gone. Cool. Is the little kid still outside? No! Interesting. And how does this change where they've hung the bug? Okay, so he's still here. And so is she. We already got access to this little secret area here. I'm wondering if there's a way to get behind there. So we looked at everything here. We found some drugs. We figured out he's a drug dealer. It really is and has been a, a pretty amazing experience so far. Just how reactive everything is. Uh, this loading time does not bode well. Oof. Will it crash? This will be the first time it crashes. So can I reach that? Ugh, no, I can't quite get to it. Where is it going? So, I'm going to try to get there. Ooh, the policeman's cloak. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing there. Man down, a trooper has been left behind the enemy lines. Uh, you could swear it's more of an instinct than an actual sight, but you know there's an RCM signature rectangle on the cloak. It's a cop's cloak. A cop's cloak! It's a cop's cloak! Cloak! <laughs> yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Ooh! That is uh, not very good. Well, let's look around a little bit. The wind is aggressive up here. This uh, The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering over the distance over the container yard. Yeah, well. This, the look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. Motherfucker. Let out a whistle. Now that's a huge crane. Yes, that's one way of putting it. He turns to you with a faint smile, then looks back at the crane. It's certainly an impressive achievement of engineering. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. He, s he looks at the sad piece of fabric flapping in the wind. Uh, what exactly are we doing up here? What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbor. They're bound to have information for us. I thought this was our intention. He looks around, wind rustling his hair, or it could be that we're just exploring. 
He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. <laughs> Which is true. Alright, so do you really think the cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump. The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it, he looks over the edge at the cold pavement below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous, two meters tops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. Should we try? Let's give it a try. Yes! Oh, so lucky. Oof. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Close your eyes, let your senses take in the world around you. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. He's so on... This is my necktie talking to you, by the way. He's so on the money, Broughton. Just imagine yourself dual-wielding a bottle and a flaming cigarette whilst airborne. Now let's continue the voyage through the salty air. Boom! As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive, alert, and capable. It must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it, the lieutenant exclaims. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. So, we've just opened a whole new area. That's pretty exciting. Okay, let's grab the cloak! Time to put it on. What is the jacket giving me? Let's compare stats. That's one. And this adds this plus one to shivers. Oh, cool. That's quite a look I'm going for here. Got all my tools, got my toys. Let's talk to our buddy here. We should think about cutting it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. You should take care of that then. But I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RMCP shouldn't be sleeping in the streets. We'll figure something out. Though he finds the situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. So, the idea of whether or not we should explore further, or if we should sleep for the very first time in this game, see how that works. I'm nudging more towards sleep, but I'm, I'm not sure how to get down. Okay, let's try this. Whole new area, never been here before. Whoa! Let's take a look. The radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. Every worker equals member of the board is written on top of the flyers. There's tons to fuck around with here. A standard office file cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. Can I talk to it? No. Sometimes you can talk to coffee pots. Ooh, a postcard. I'm not sure if these are collectibles or just things you can sell. But, uh, yeah, I'm liking the postcards. Did I look in there yet? On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's in, he thinks. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Oh, little burp, excuse me there. <laughs> Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revenchal from the outside world, from Mundi, Grand, and even Ilamara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revenchal. Curran, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of the thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Ooh, pretty good. Oh, I've had so many lucky rolls recently, though. 
Oh, very nice. Whatever's hidden there is well hidden. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck to the side of the drawer. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo. Everett's shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everett's plants. Sweep off his floor. More banners. All the items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Turn to the lieutenant. Look, Kim, a to-do list with a, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everett. Hmm. Everett Clare, probably. The head of the Debardeuse Union. He inspects the note. One of his aides must have left it in. Nothing incriminating here, though. Remember, Leo, Everett's shoes. All right, so we're looking there again. Oh, so that's probably a code for the folders. Now, can I mess around? I still have to pay for my damages. There's no mission associated with that. I bet it has something to do with that. So let's, let's raid his medical cabinet. Uh, yes, please. Some bitch in sunglasses. Very cool. Magnesium, important. That's something that will uh, make sure your morale gets up. An imposing combination of punch lock and a payphone is looking down from the wall. A note on the side that says tokens unavailable due to strike use change. Insert 10 cents. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. <laughs> uh, there's no way that'll work. Let's try. What? Very good. Your fingers run over the dial pad. 005. That's the dialing code for Revenchal. 4952. In a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. And 993. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. A crackle. Someone picks up. They say, video retchal, revachal, 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter films for home use. This is Lenny. How may I help you? What is this place? Video revachal is a 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter <laughs> films for home use. This is Lemmy. No, I meant, what is this place to me? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. Do you know me? No. <laughs> Why did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? So this is the name that I accidentally made for myself and I'm really committed to it. So I like this. My name is Raphael Ambrosio Consto. Costoa? Hmm. I'll figure out how to pronounce that later. Do you have anything on my name? Raphael, what? Listen, I can't help you over the phone. He seemed annoyed now. If you need further assistance, you can visit us at the corner of Voyager and Maine. Are we done? He thinks you're pulling a prank on him. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. Interesting. Which you can kind of hear, too. And when you get close to it. That is a cool addition. Did I get everything in here? Yep. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to... Like, did we... Grab any... No, that's his handkerchief. Hmm. Alright, so I still have to figure that out. I was wondering if there's a way that we could... Uh... Oh, the door's locked. I guess you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. There's no union leader in here. Want to get out of here? All right. Seems I'm unable. Hmm, that's really interesting too, how you're able to talk to different people and it makes some of the closed white checks come back. I think that's a really cool little addition. Okay.
Okay, so huh, is there a way to get here? No, no way to get here. So let's fuck around with that. Collecting rainwater. Okay. Is there a way to go here? Alright, the only way out, it seems, is in. What's this? The composite eye of halogen lights watches you emitting a low buzz. White pine trees are printed onto the screen. It looks like a forest under snow. Cool. Wild pines. Oh, Jesus, I think I'm stuck here. I was able to climb up here. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Calvison. Another health pack, great. Some money. Anything else around here? The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. I missed that button. I'm just I'm worried it's gonna drop a crate on all these people here. Crane control panel, a rusting control panel with several knobs, two buttons marked Alumer and Etendeo. That's definitely how you say that, are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Alumar on, Atonde off. Let's press on. With lab grinding, with a lab grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container. Slowly, very, very slowly. I must wait. Oh, damn. This looks like it's gonna fall if I touch it. I should uh, go touch it. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. Inland Empire, my boy! This crane was built with a purpose which has now been fulfilled to move this container. What's inside the container? Who can say? All you know is, it's special. I can't see how that was worth the ruckus, he looks at the crate, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Let's turn it off. Alright, so it's stuck there now. Let's mess around with this. Before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the yard. Kim, I think there's something about this container. You do? Because I don't. What? Why not? There are millions of containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? I don't know, Kim. It just feels special. It's a cargo container, detective, just like all the others. He doesn't even look at it. We're not here to interact with containers. We're here to talk to the Union, right? Let's knock on the door. Again. Open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The door seems to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Nothing more to do here. Hmm. Can I try again? Let's try to open this up again. If I turn it on, what will happen? Yeah, no, nothing will happen. I need to figure out how to get out of here if we want to go to sleep. Grab a little bit of cash. This speaker tower is silent. There's no work to organize in the yard below. So I'm gonna grab. No, nope, it doesn't let me do anything. It's interesting. Industrial sized therm thermos. It smells like burnt coffee. More. Just. Hey, there's a person. 
The banner sags under the weight of the rain and snow, white waves on red. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The accent is so thick it's impossible not to notice he's Yubi from the vanishing peninsula of Yubi Sunt <clears throat> on Monday. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everett. Hi! Everett, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, master? The look in his eye, in his deep blue eyes, is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an asshole for no apparent reason. I see you're not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. No, of course not. I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks are just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just, some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. I can not wait to talk to this dude. Alright, you're Yubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Irish, mister. <laughs> Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. <laughs> what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves the containers towering behind him. Ooh. What's going on here? Look at the mountains of containers rising behind. Come on. Yes. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outward from the container's yard core. Um, let's see. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really, he shrugs and continues merrily. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. <laughs> this looks like a massive redecorating operation, Kim. Yes, they're hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debardu Union logo on them. So I learned something there. Okay, where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Oh, most of you guys are, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on strike, the whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. We haven't worked for two months now. So, no one is working. Not everyone is down there, of course, he chuckles. Mr. Everett is in his office, where he always is, and John Luke is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got in some drunken trouble and Everett sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. He stops but seems eager to tell you more. What kind of trouble did this Titus and his friends get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and his boys stirred something up in town, probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. Aw, don't go all bad cop on this simple, friendly fellow. Well, let's ask again. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know? Another chuckle. I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Cool, bro. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. He looks to you for assistance. Hmm... Hmm, let's do this one. Okay, Leo, let's hear about this fight you got into. I remember I was the runt of the class. He laughs merrily. The bigger boys always used to pick on me, you see. I had a bit of a temper back in the day. Flew off the handle like nobody's business. But Mr. Everett and his brother always came to help. Once they beat old Noel Becker so bad he needed stitches on his head. He chuckles again. Noel never started another fight with anyone after that. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar are real nice guys, mister. You should go talk to Mr. Everett. I'm sure you'll be good friends. He's friends with everyone around here. The little guy starts coughing. 
you're never getting anything useful out of him. It's good enough for you found out Everett has a brother called Edgar, and he helped Leo. That's something. Uh, does he work here? Yes, yes, everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick, but everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man, and when Mr. Everett is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man... And, oh yeah, and I'm also Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett's away, he chuckled. Actually, Miss Buford is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. A good-hearted chuckle again. Who is this Miss Buford? The lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with skin like those do and sucker candy bars. <laughs> do and sucker candy bars. My missus likes so much, them are real nice to suckle on once dinner is done, and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here, and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Stay on this Miss Buford topic. Man, I would love to learn more about those delicious candies, though. Who's this Miss Buford you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie? She's a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in... This here neighborhood knows everybody and gets along with everyone. A real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. He goes on, If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Jesus Christ. Dr. Lamontre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor almost 50 years, she has. He sighs and then falls silent, watching you meekly with his blue, blue eyes. So Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Buford. Interesting. What about the sadness? <sighs> Let's not do that. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. The lieutenant smiles at the little man. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. He didn't think it was possible, but his smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here, but you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothing might not mean an awful lot in the Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. I'm glad we're helping this little man. Are you the Leo who wrote notes to make more banners? Oh yeah, we got the, the note earlier. Oh, yes, yes, he replied excitingly. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was that about the borscht? Oh, yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. The little guy chuckled merrily. It's very, very good. It makes a man feel so warm and happy. He shakes his head with a wild smile. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renault's board dogs every time the lunch is done. Jesus, uh, what do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes, I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling rags. Hold up. Who makes it at the whirling rags? Oh, the whirling's cook, he makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manahan in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grand. All right, let's take on this task. Something is off about this borscht. I'm going to look into it. Oh, Mr. Sure, little guy nods. Okay, so we got the borscht task. Going to figure out about this special borscht. What's in the container over there? Points to the container suspended from the Kramarn. Well, not anymore. Oh, that one? He looks at the container. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waited to be loaded up. Told you. I don't believe easy, Leo. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everett then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They live their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs, then continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar. And I went to the same school we did when we were boys. 
patience. Deep down, you have the mental power to keep listening. Not many would, but you do. Do not interrupt. We had an arithmetic teacher, Miss Bellows, Leela lets out a little chuckle. Her real name was Miss Bellums, but she was a real pretty lady. But when she got mad, he starts laughing. All the boys liked her, if you know what I mean, mister. He winks at you. We used to sneak in her yard in the dark and peek through the window. One time we saw Miss Bellows with a fellow. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, mister. He looks for a sign of disbelief in your eyes. Don't say anything. He keeps nodding and looking at you with a smile that's too sincere to be clever. Finally, he seems to lose some internal struggle and adds, That was naked, too. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, thank you, mister. Hey, I almost forgot. Mr. Everett usually in that container over there. Leave it points to the left, where he has already left for the day, but he never stays after 22. Alright, so normally this is where Mr. Leo is, but he's not here right now. He's the leader. We've reached the end of this era. Area here. I'm gonna find out about that fucking borscht. I'm not sure why this does not work. So this is where the, the leader is supposed to be. Inside this shipping container. There's coffee. A large table with two huge vacuum insulated thermal coffee dispensers. Someone has forgotten a small plastic card next to the stack of cups. Peer into a discarded coffee cup. Let's look into the old cup. You see nothing exceptional. It's a dirty cup, smudge brown, with an old ground coffee stuck to the bottom, slowly getting moldy. Uh, what am I supposed to see here? Look closer. If you squint your eyes enough, the coffee grounds almost seem to make up two letters, F and K. It's a clue! A clue of what? A clue about the person behind all the murders. Hmm... Yes, of course. It's certainly not just an example of pareidolia, noticing patterns and noise. Worth it. It's meaningful, I swear. You just have to wait. I've got the case nearly busted wide open. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. It is a sign, just like a remote viewer would operate. Signs hidden inside the mundane. You've got it, pal. I would never make up such a thing. All right, let's pick up the card. You snatch up the red plastic card. It features a black contour of a crane lifting container. The name Etienne Hogarth is written in the middle. Below it, in smaller text, member of the board. It comes up with a magnetic strip meant to open electronic doors. Ooh. You know what that means. We are going to open. Oh, he's not here. There's a fish. So let's open up that container. All trouble. Okay, let's continue here. We got the key. Let's try to open up this joint. He said there's nothing inside. Do we trust Leo? Open the door. Uh, I thought we grabbed the key. Uh, did we not? I have to grab it again. Okay, let's take another look. Sworn we did. And we gotta figure out how to get out of here. It's because we have not slept yet in this game. I know I did. I definitely grabbed it. Now I'm feeling unsure of myself. Well, maybe it's a key for something else. Okay, let's let's get out of here. We've we've definitely learned some 
very interesting things about how this case is going and the uh, union's involvement. Already inspected the body and, and looked at a hundred different ways that this uh, poor fellow might have died. And yeah, these loading times are not that of a AAA title, unfortunately. Do 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 do. Okay. Anything that kindly Leo has to say? Oh, hey, Mister. I need to be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And a lot of folks really did keep coming back. <laughs> I had some questions for you, if that's not too much trouble. Oh, he's already answered them all. Okay, so we also got to find out about that borscht. That was something to look at. Let's figure out how to get back to Sleepy Land. Got my police jacket. Very strange that didn't work. I feel like it should have. No, I can't go there. Now, did we try? Cigarette butts, empty bottles. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Wait, how hard? Well, they went through six bottles of potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Did I do this? Well, the lieutenant looks at you, then the bottles. Yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Looks like I had a lot of fun. It really, really doesn't. The lieutenant turns to go. Let's turn our attention elsewhere and move on. Something about this place. I haven't been here yet. Night Watchman's Booth. This is the Night Watchman's Booth. The name on the door says Rene Arnault. Kim, I'm going to take a quick look inside. If you must, the lieutenant looks around, but please hurry, we're pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Uh, I'm going to take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in the street fair. The man is young, dark-skinned, and dressed in a royal car carabiner, carabiner uniform. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take the photo? The lieutenant asks, glancing at the photo. Mm. Yeah, something about this man piques my interest. I think this can be a side thing. Fine, he nods, but let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. So I definitely I got a photo of a random couple. They look very happy. Can I go down here? So how the hell do I get out of here? Doesn't seem to be a way out. trying folks all right come on hmm do I have to go through this again yeah there's no place to jump 
How about down here? No, that's not allowing me to do that. Over here? Nope, not allowing me to do that either. So I think really my options are... Can't seem to jump through that. That might be a glitch because I came here during a night time. And uh, from what we learned from Leo, Everett isn't around during this time. Hmm. Oh, now it's open. Very strange. Oh, it could have been the key that I got. That makes more sense. I was trying to use it on the uh, container on the outside there. And I think that... Fortunately, it can be used here. Wow, this is taking a long time. Cool beans. All right, what do we got here? Now notice, in case of a strike, press button behind guard. Hmm. Oh, there's some peeps here. Getting a little frightened. little scared. Alright, let's go for it. Let's save. You haven't seen me save yet. I'm saving a lot here. Come on. So I have no idea who these people are. They look frightening as hell. Let's talk to them. This is probably Measurehead. Your body betrays. Oh. your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. The young woman at the giant side agrees. Don't say anything. Size him up first. Why don't we try that? Are you admiring my muscle physiology? A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this Asial Pinacle. Be calm, Ham Sandwich. You are not in danger. Ham Sandwich. Because you are not a threat to me. Interesting. What do you mean my body betrays my degeneracy? You have succumbed to a wound. His face contorts in disgust as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from the throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Smell your breath. Kim, is it really so bad? It's not good. <laughs> Wait, um, Algul? Yes, Alhul. But what is Algul? Alhul is an ancient. Ilmavan to a zone, a parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert big mees played on you, for humiliating them and stripping them of their land. You mean alcohol? Correct, my small skull self. You're right, I'm a servant of Algol, but I still need to enter the harbor. No, you don't. You need to get another thing. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Aplo Group that's not good. is waning. Show him the ham still got it. My, as you can see here, my physique, it does not measure up. I gotta use my brains. Uh, why don't we try? I am the police. I need you to comply now. Uh, I think the ham sandwiches still has it in them. Willingly calling yourself a ham sandwich. How far the Occidental Ablo group has fallen. He pauses in melancholic you reflection. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war, like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy 
race theory and statecraft. This guy might be a Nazi. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. I think that he might be a Nazi. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? Babe. It is, baby. Yeah. You know it. You're right about all this. Now I just need you to let me go into the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should leave this stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Hmm. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Wool. Your beloved, Bertrand. Inside, we will store the odds to homosexuality called Art <laughs> and your microcephalic skull. Ooh, my conceptualization. I think it's down right now because of... Oh, it's up actually because of what I'm wearing, so that's good. Mm. Know anything? I can show him the mug. Know anything about this mug? He does not so much as glance at your object. Uh, this is your kind of thing. Stop showing me your pathetic mug. I have no interest in it. Uh, so let's talk about this. You serve the Union, don't you? Aren't they white? Don't be vulgar. White or not has little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. He turns his eyes towards the harbor, seemingly bored with you. There must be some friction there. He's keeping it well hidden, however. Yeah, but you still serve them. How does that factor into your life? Miss Claire is a ma Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital something. Your race n nativistic communists never did. Also to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Uh, let's do communism is pretty cool. Idiotic communism is the single greatest contributor to your race's descent. Everywhere around you, the fruits of its failure to challenge the world order, individualism, rock and roll, music, sexually transmitted diseases. Above all, rampant multinational finance still reigns larger. Tell me, where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? He leans in closer. Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? Yeah, baby, you know I got it from disco. Offshoots of the Siemenese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race, but what is done is done. I am not surprised that you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Siemenese race. Okay, so he seems to be Siemenese. Okay, I'll ask, who are the Siemenese? The Southern Island Race Haplo Group. A for A. We are the rightful masters of the Inzadelusian archipelago. We descend from the Aeropatic of the ancient, oh Jesus, Perkinesis, and arrived here 4,000 years ago, millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. I'm really trying with this accent. All right, so you're born and raised on the islands before you move to Revenchal. I am a descendant to the narrow streets of Olinburg are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Simonese women walk into the grey mass of the Ile de Fantôme, waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. This is not the guy I should have chosen to do a voice for. So you did come from the islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. He would be appreciative if you do not further chase this line of inquiry in front of the women. So, you're really not, you're not really Simonese, you're just from Revenchal. I'm from Cook, 
he changes his tactic. And no, it's not just in Revenshall. The city is central to the Semeni strategy. Spreading through its trade network, our culture will dominate the world. You have heard enough about our philanthropic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with and never getting into the harbor. Uh, Kim, what do you think about this? I don't think anything about this. We're wasting our time having this conversation. Your fedumoronic friend is right. You should leave here with your tail between your legs, contemplating race extinction. I am an immovable object. Well, these do kind of look like the other tattoos. Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. He gestures toward the lorry men down the street. I am not like them. I am a craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently jaw a fernal grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubts. Oh, you're right. Uh, let's see. You sure I'm not craniometrically superior to you? Your extinction... You exhibit forward protection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia and sexual inaccountability. From a purely aesthetic standpoint, the dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. This is not chronometry, just an observation. Uh, what else is wrong with me? It is impossible to see any more of your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of algol. From what remains of your features, I can see fleshy lips, baldness of the head, and long arms relative to longer limbs. Not very good. This leads me to conclude you are not a police officer. You are a common criminal, an offspring of murderers and sailors from Sir Les Clef and Vesper, and possibly even the degenerate herpeters of Yubi. Interesting. So one of my ancestors was Sir Le Clef and the other Vesper? Your racial heritage is uninteresting. It is the same as all Revencholians. Your parents and their parents made their decision to reproduce while under the influence of Algol. That is the only reason you are here. Alright, let's see if I can do this. 72, it's a high chance. I, I had such good rolls, I don't think this one will do it. Yep. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Just ask for race secrets. Uh, no. It didn't work. Oh, I got a breakthrough coming. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. So cool. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Actually, now that I hear superstar and law office official in a sentence, they sound weird together. What are you, deaf? They're perfect, like rock star politician and drug addict teacher. Embrace the superstardom you've worked so hard to establish. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salam, Rocky Bomb. Badass. On the edge, disco cop. Time to recede into ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera, lights, action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you and you along with it in an iconic monochromatic solution, a black silhouette against a rastercized orange world. It is on. Oh, I, oh, finished, I finished this. Cool. cool. So this is the remote viewer, viewer to do with my weird, weird internal, internal monologue. monologue. Oh, that's, oh, that's not good. Oh, so one, so one less, less drama is, is done. You've broken, you've broken loose from the confines of modern science and into the vault of extra century knowledge from exotic, from exotic cultures. Mankind, mankind has always searched for a means to break the shackles restraining the mind. Some, some practice meditation, some take like a ton of DMT. You apparently, apparently only need to rub your, your temples and bam, bam the ether, ether opens before you, presenting its dark secrets, secrets entities in the void making contact. contact. Definitely not just because you're rubbing your temples and talking to yourself. Ooh, Ooh, and this, and this was, was the communist, communist leader, leader that I was, that I was learning about there. earlier. Zero, Zero percent, percent of communists. Communism, communism has been built. built. Evil, Evil childburner child billionaires still, still rule the world with a shit-eating grin. grin. All, he All he has managed to do is make himself sad. sad. He's, He's starting to suspect Krasnov Mazov fucked, fucked him over personally with his socioeconomic theory. It has, it has however, made, made him into a very, very smart boy with something like a university degree in truth. Instead, instead of building communism, he now builds a precision model of this grotesque, duplicitous world. world. Uh, 
Okay, so this left me with some, with some bad stuff. stuff. I, I minus, minus one, one in visual, visual calculus and minus one, one in authority. Is there, Is there any, any advantage to this? To this? I, get I get more XP. XP. Interesting. Interesting. And, and then, then remote viewers. viewers. Drama's, Drama's one. one. But, but if, if I do, I do anything, anything with psychology, psychology it's, it's minus one. one. So that's, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a big boon. Alright, right, can, can I get out of here or what? I cannot. Uh, can I talk to him again? again or? Your race descent uh, has only locked. worked. Alright, All right, time, time to maybe, maybe go, go to bed. bed. It's nearly midnight, folks. Come on. Never, Never been to this side of the docks before. before. It says G R I H. The Greater, Greater Revenchal Industrial Harbor. Here, here is the harbor. The lorry's, lorry's probably stored fuel here. here. Now, now they store booze. booze. Some money. money. Is this, is this where I was earlier? Yes, it is. is. Old, lady Old lady is still is here. here. The, the protesters have gone for the, for the night. night. Everyone's gone for the night. I wasn't able to check this out before. Freet! Freet. Magnesium. Um. Ooh, Ooh, I did want to talk, talk to, to the gardener, gardener here. here. See, if See if... Hello again, officer. How are things? It's, it's so, so late, late you're, and you're still, still here. here. I'm a, I'm a night hawk. What can I say? say? She flashes a smile. Odd. Odd. I've, I've investigated, investigated the body. It shouldn't be long till we get it down. down. Okay. okay. She doesn't, she doesn't quite, quite know what to say. say. Thanks, Thanks for keeping, keeping me in the know, know sir. Uh, uh, I already asked her this stuff. stuff. Just these two things. things. Although, Although the, the kids, kids did say, say she doesn't belong here. She, she doesn't, doesn't work here anymore. anymore. So it is a little bit odd. Alright, Ooh! We got, we got some, some karaoke, karaoke going. going. Spices, alcohol, alcohol, and tomato, tomato hangs, hangs in the air. I gotta, I gotta learn about this borscht. borscht. Alright, All right, boy, boy, let's, let's see if we can find, find a place to sleep. sleep. The arch the arch is an eyebrow. eyebrow. So, about, so about, about that money, money I owe you. I was, I was wondering, wondering if we could come to some, some sort of arrangement for tonight. For tonight. Does, Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? Kim, Kim is, is about, about to say something. something. Let him. He adjusts, he adjusts his glasses. glasses. I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I, feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. business. Forgive, Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking and he stops mid-sentence. He, he shrinks, shrinks back, back a bit under the lieutenant's severe gaze. gaze. I mean, I mean, no offense, offense it's really, really nothing personal. personal. I, just I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. establishment. Hold on, Hold on I, still I still have my keys, keys you know. Good, Good luck, luck trying to use that. He taps his foot against a metal box, box installed, installed in the back, back of the counter. counter. All, the All the locks, locks have, have an electrical component. They have, they have to be unlocked, unlocked down here with a master key before your guest keys will open the lock. This conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? No, no, until you bring me the money. Okay, okay, he turns to the heavy side. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. 
I really, I really didn't, didn't want to resort, resort to this, this. the man, the man is, is thinking. thinking. Oh, oh, Lieutenant, we're done, we're done here. here. Maybe, Maybe I can, I can ask, ask him for a drink. drink. Uh, I already went through, through this. this. You don't understand, you don't understand the seriousness of my situation. I'm an alcoholic. I need my fix. Ever more reason, reason for me not, not to serve you. you. Sir, was there, was there anything else you needed other than alcohol? Ooh, there's, Ooh, there's a mysterious blue steel door, door in the back, in the back of the kitchen. kitchen. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah that, that door, door is sure. sure. There's, there's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. He shrugs. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, no, I don't, I don't have a key. key. I, don't I don't know how to get, get there, and I don't care either. It's, it's not, not like, like I've ever been wondering about it for ten years. years. It's, it's just the Fritz warehouse, probably, or some, or some boring, boring storage, storage space with a bunch of old junk, junk dust. dust. Junk and dust. He runs his finger across the counter to check for dirt. He's, He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine. Okay. A little. He shrugs, shrugs. But, but my job, job doesn't, doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one, one of the cafeterias, cafeterias I manage. Ooh, skill, skill point. So, so I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, over though, after, after the animals, animals and, I and I haven't found, found a key, key so, so good luck with that. I already, already went through all this. Hmm. The, the sign, sign reserve says, says, why isn't anyone in the missile? Ah, ah so we looked at the speed. speed. It says it should be open. Good, Good question, question, he turns to the cafeteria, cafeteria manager. They're probably, They're probably getting, getting drunk or protesting somewhere, somewhere something somewhere, somewhere, or laying low, low after, after the, you know, you know lynching. lynching. Whatever, Whatever he may feel about you, he can't, can't miss the opportunity to throw you a look at what he assumes is shared understanding. Go with it. The union, the union guys, guys think they're untouchable. They're, they're probably fucking killed that guy, guy or something. And now, and now they think they, think they can hide out till it all blows over. And it's fair weather again in Martinez. Hmm, the lieutenant, lieutenant thinks. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. All right, so we got to get to bed. So we got to get the carriage. The question is here, do I want to add something to these techniques? Or do I want... To, to unlock, unlock one, one of these. these. Oof. I, really I, really, I much prefer, prefer this. this. So, so I'm going to unlock, unlock that. that. Uh, let's, let's do, do white, white warning. warning. This, this I, I do like, like but, but I think, think it'll lead to some, some insanity. insanity. Let's, Let's do white warning. warning. Yeah, yeah, my, my authority is going, going low. low. We, we really, really got to get to bed, folks. folks. See, See? the, the, the Crypto's wall just wife has already been to bed. It's, it's so fascinating, fascinating how reactive this stuff is that, that we need, need to, to solve a hundred different puzzles just, just to be able to get to bed to solve the main puzzle, puzzle again. And surprisingly, and surprisingly it, it never gets, gets tedious or annoying. Or well, has it yet. yet. The, the nighttime, nighttime load time, time seems to be a lot larger. Longer, longer rather. Okay. We're, We're here, here, old Kimmy. Kimmy. Inside, Inside you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of fuel of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect's transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. Just tap that. As you tap the gauge, the indicator can jerks that are startled. It's in the large orange section. It's warm. The cage, the cage at the back of the motor cage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. 
I confiscated, I confiscated these four a little while back. We can take, take them to the pawn shop down on Martinell's Canal. What do you, do you mean by confiscated, confiscated them? A couple, a couple weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. traffic. Turns, Turns out he was a coalition official son and high. I get, I get it. it. I would have caused them too. They're mesmerizing. That, that they are. The lieutenant looked at the his eyes. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for the conviction. Never asked for them back. Did you, Did you want to put, put these spinners, spinners on your machine? machine? No, 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 that, that would be silly. silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. them. Doesn't matter. I, I couldn't, couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners? That would be outrageous. outrageous. Yes, outrageously cool. He you flash the smell. I'm, I'm sorry you have to sell these. these. It's, it's not... It's, it's only right that we sell them. them. They'll say nothing. nothing. Do, do I, I want, want him, to him to have spinners? spinners. Let's, Let's see how much these spinners are worth. They're, They're worth a lot. lot. I'm, I'm going to go to a pawn, pawn shop. shop. Let's see, see if I can give them... Guess. So nothing, nothing, there's, there's no way, way to give them back, back so, so I'm committed, committed to, to taking these spinners. Now, if, if I, I just, just go upstairs, upstairs maybe, maybe there's a way I can sneak around this. She'll let us in. Yes? No, I don't want that. I want to get into the... Hmm. What about this way? Maybe I can break, break the window, window from, from the outside. outside. Hmm. No, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of option for that. Where, where I found, found my shoe, shoe earlier. Here. Okay, okay so, so let's get some spinners. spinners. Or let's, let's sell, sell some spinners, spinners rather. Man, Man that's probably gonna be too late, late though. though. It doesn't seem to be like, like a sleep, sleep mechanism, mechanism or something like that. that. There's nothing, nothing about me getting more tired. Okay. Old man Charlie. All right, you're right. It's all about the money. Let's get it going, let's get it going. Oh, that's interesting, I didn't know that. Pick dialogue options that begin with hold on or wait to gain additional information before the conversation moves on. So that's something another game would tell you. And I, I kind of like that this one does not. So I said it was south of the plaza. I'm assuming. That this is south. Oh, a sewer grate, a gateway to a river of filth. 
helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Drawbridge. We got some gloves. What are my current gloves? Gardening gloves that help with interfacing. Is this water lock out of order until Wednesday? Water lock control panel. A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the metal is a lever beneath it, a small metal plaque. This visual, this panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the channel, but there's a crashed Samarin butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Pull the lever! You pull the lever all the way up until the metal clicks against the contact pins, you hear a soft clunk, and then... Nothing happens. Push it harder! Nothing happens. A cold gust of wind blowing from the sea interrupts the silence of the situation. Hmm. The lieutenant hums to himself while staring at your activities. Does it again. Oh, on Wednesday, a spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to get across the canal some other way. Hmm. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality be restored on Wednesday morning? There was. So we gotta wait a few days. Ooh, can I interact with this? Uh, a crumpled billboard reading Samarin butter soaks in the canal. Two ugly lines mar the bright countenance of the, bl of the blonde boy depicted. What is Samarin butter? Whatever it is, the boy in the billboard doesn't seem very happy about it. Alright. Let's... No way. Didn't think so. Nothing to see here. Oh, this has to be the pawn shop or I'm screwed. Pawn shop. Fast cash for faster times. Hopefully it's open all hours. Ooh. Oh, he's in his own little cube. Welcome, Welcome to the pawn shop. shop. <laughs> Some kind of machine, an antique cash register. A bust of a woman, the plaque simply says DEI. In the dark, a film projector is whirling away. It's kind of cool. Mostly military wear with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. Let's mess around with that. Sawed off street light. A typical Martini street lamp sits among assorted floors and tables. Mm, let your gaze run over the street light. The light pool has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. <laughs> How much for the street light? 700, a real bargain, I dare say. Uh, even taking the risk, even taking to the count the risk of Tainla, that seems a bit steep. There's also the matter of rewiring, but the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjustment in the morphological field. The light just became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. So we got some big items. Let's see if we can just get some money. It's not often that I see officers of the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns slowly to you. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movements of the light across the walls of the shop. Uh, it's shameful how insufficient the police presence is in these parts. I haven't really had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about the inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. 
Hmm. Honestly, I think some of your selections are, press your fingers to your lips, more tasteful than others. She keeps me entertained. Entertained. He might be high. If he is, on what? No way I'm going to get that. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Lieutenant steps in, hands him the spinners. Roy takes the hubcaps with the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. He marvels at the cobalt shimmer and nods. Yes, these are very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mescal banger? No matter, I'll give you 200 real. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you, the lieutenant explains as the cash broker opens the register and counts the cash. Of course, I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you, he takes the cash, then turns to you. Here's 130 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The rest goes into his pocket. The windfall is a small consolation. I'd like to sell my clothes. I'm not purchasing any more clothing. He looks you up and down quickly. Suddenly, his gaze fixes on your tie. He steps back from the glass, and especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. Your mother is a necrotic object. I'm fun. Look at me sparkle in the light of the projector. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. I don't like these. No sale. Do you know what these tattoos mean? He frowns. Apathetic paths, counter and radiance networks, anti-magnetism. It's darkness, that's all I know. Sell me something lighter. Oh, so we can sell these sort of things. Some of these cheat postcards. I don't want to sell any of these. But before I sell it, I was, he studies the pen carefully, rolling around in his St. Baptiste Summer Dinghy Races 31. What a pleasant time that was. What do you want for a price? I can give you 350 320 Hey, that's a ripoff. A pin from 31 ought to be priced at 310 but I added another $0.10 cents just to be nice. But can you hold on to it for a few days? I'm putting it up for sale, I promise. That's all I want to know about the pin. Okay, I don't think I'm going to sell this crap. Let's ask this. Ooh. That made that go up. Let's keep talking to him. Maybe this will help. By the way, do you happen to have any guns like the ones carried by officers of the citizens' militia? Something else came. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. My gun! Lieutenant shifts from one feet to another alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? You, uh... With Kim here, too, that just sounds really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. He hesitates. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revenchal Citizens Militia. I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off-the-chart photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. He's trying to spare... It's like he's trying to spare you. Hmm... I feel like there's something you're not telling me. He looks away. You weren't quite yourself, officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and that you need the money. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. Ooh, I am so sorry you had to see me in that state. We don't have to talk about it any further. No apologies necessary, officer. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman, although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this straight. The lieutenant turns to you. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it. Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. 
He sighs. Yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. This mess, he means your mess. All right, any idea where I can find the buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she's coming from or where she went. Hmm, a needle in a haystack. There's nothing you can do about it now. You'll just have to hope your luck upon her somehow. At least now I know how I lost my sword arm. Let's talk about something else. Hmm, anything extra there? No. Let's try. Damn. Okay, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it and many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get the answer. Damn. Let's ask him about our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try to answer any questions you might have. And know anything about the recent hanging? I'll do my best to keep my distance from that manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. Think you could help me get a corpse out of a tree? The corpse behind the hotel, I assume. He looks in the swirling lights then to you. I don't have a truck with a mountain platform or anything of that sort myself. Ask around the harbor. There might be some workers there who are willing to help. Actually, that's all I've got. All right. Business to take care of. So, that leaves us for today. We will finally have a place to sleep, thanks to good old Kim. And we can retire for the evening and have our debriefing when we return yet again. I'm Andy Burkowski for VGS.